Hi my lovely Frosty fam, it's me Karen Frost here at Nail Decadence and I've got a, another video for you. This is a, an acrylic design so it's a, you know, hashtag not polish because it's all acrylic. Welcome to my channel, welcome one and all, thank you for being here. These are all the products I will be using to create the set that you've seen in the thumbnail of the video. As you saw, that uh, pink colour is a colour that I've minxed, minxed? <laughs> mixed myself. Uh, I custom mix my coloured acrylic powders. If you'd like to know how, check out the video in the link in the card. Um, there's a how to mix your own custom acrylic uh, video in the card for you to go and check out so you see how I make my colours myself. You're welcome to watch that. I'm using my wonderful hand dolly as my model as usual. If you'd like to get your hands on a realistic silicone practice hand, do check out hand dolly at www.handdolly.co.uk and you are more than welcome to use my discount code which is KFGIFT to get some pennies off your order. It is an affiliate link so I do uh, get a few pennies myself but um, this is a product that I've used for years and that I purchased to two of them myself before I became an affiliate so I certainly wouldn't recommend something that I'm not willing to spend my money on and as you see in a lot of my videos I use hand dolly unless I'm working on myself or my daughter or my mum hand dolly is is always available so she's a, a, a really good tool to have to up your nail game anyway let's go on to what I'm doing in this set so I've already applied the thin clear base onto the nails after I applied the tips and prepped the nails and all of that good stuff and then I uh, applied some of the pink acrylic and I used my craft knife to cut a line on a diagonal slant because I'm going to be doing a colour block on this nail. I'm using the pink for colour only. I like to cap everything. I like the look of the clear acrylic over the colour. It gives it a nice glass finish. I It's just a look I really enjoy but also it um, saves your coloured powders so if it's not if it is a strength powder and you can build a nail with it if you're capping it in clear instead of using the colour to build the nail you are saving yourself some of your coloured powders so they will last a bit longer clear is the strongest acrylic powder so it's giving you your strength and yeah all of those things I love capping in clear you know saves you a few pennies as well so all good in my opinion so I did cap that colour block I placed my apex in the back third as well so that part of the nail is essentially done and I will file it in later on so moving on to the other nail beside it I'm going to be using this pink colour all over the nail I'm applying it thinly as I said I use my coloured powders for colour only and then I cap them in clear for the strength so yeah I'm just using oh I've got a bit of mica there never mind that's a few swipes of my brush and it will disappear um yeah I'm just using the pink for colour only so I'm applying it nice and thin so that I can cap the nail I'm also going to be applying some of the hearts on this now so I would have to cap it anyway keep the coloured layer nice and thin that way you've got room to cap the nail in a decent amount so that you don't file into the uh, glitter because like I said I'm going to be adding those glitter hearts so I just want full opaque coverage of this pink so I'm just putting a little bit more by that cuticle area get that cuticle area looking nice and neat and then whilst the acrylic is still wet I will apply some of those glitter hearts and they are fiddly and to get them where you want them because I want them to all sort of face the same way sort of point down um, and I'm just going to apply them 
vertically up the nail in a little bit of a swoop and my acrylic started to dry so I just added a little bit of clear acrylic to stick the hearts on with to hold them in place so I've picked up a few more of the hearts with a bit of clear acrylic and I'm just going to quickly sort of get them into the areas I'd like them to be so I've got some of the bigger ones towards the middle of the nail and then the smaller ones towards the cuticle and free edge and that's yeah just in a swoopy pattern but I have to work fairly quickly because the clear acrylic will start setting up on me so I do want to get them placed exactly how I'd like them to be and I am a fussy moo so yeah once I've got them placed exactly where I'd like them to be little swipe more of some clear acrylic and then I will cap them so that swipe of clear acrylic was very wet um, just to sort of hold them in place whilst I capped the bottom half of the nail so I'm just going to make sure that my acrylic is just as I'm applying these beads slightly wetter because I want good clarity in my clear acrylic and I want the clear acrylic to seep around those hearts because they some of them are quite large so they're not fitting flush onto the nail they're sticking up a little bit and I want to make sure that the acrylic flows in and in and around and underneath the bits that are sticking up as it were so that's why I'm using slightly wetter beads to just get that coverage and so I don't have any air pockets basically I want the acrylic to seep around those glitter pieces nicely so that there's no air pockets and then you see that bead that I added afterwards was slightly uh, drier so that because I'd already added that wetter bead to seep around do you know what I'm saying so it's uh, sometimes I wonder if I'm making sense when I'm talking but yeah slightly wetter beads to seep around the glitter pieces is an advantage and that way you're less likely to get air pockets and you will secure those pieces nicely so you want to make sure that there is en enough acrylic on those pieces to secure them but also to protect them so that when you file you don't file into them but you also are making sure that the structure of the nail is there that it's going to be a strong long living nail that isn't going to be broken so yeah got to have the correct thickness but also a little bit thicker than your finished nail to should be because you do want a bit to be able to file into so you want a small margin to file into not a lot but yeah you know what I mean anyway so that, leave that to set up because I'm finished with that now moving on to the little finger and I'm just using some of the clear acrylic little wet beads to pick up this chunky glitter mix which is rather stunning it's like a rose gold type of champagne silver glitter mix it's just really lovely it's more metallic it's not holographic or anything it's just metallic and it just the chunky bits in there there's so much in this glitter mix it's insane it's, it's a really nice one but because it's got such chunky bits in it it can be a little bit a little bit of a pain in the butt so do try and uh, use your brush to pat the pieces down flat so that they're not sticking up so that you don't file into them but sometimes some of the bits may stick up because it is such a chunky mix so yeah just fill in all the areas you see I'm just looking over the nail and filling any areas where there's um, bits missing so I do want it, to, want it to be full coverage I don't want you to be able to see any gaps in that glitter I will leave that to set up because I'm going to ombre over that that glitter moving on to the index finger and on this one I'll be using the glitter mix all over the nail so again just using wet beads of clear acrylic to pick that glitter up and then I'll use my brush to nudge those pieces around spread them out and make sure I have got full coverage because I don't want any gaps and again try and get those pieces to sit nice and flat so that they're not sticking up that way when you go to cap you won't um, and file you won't file into them it's just easier for when you're capping to make sure that the bits are, are just lying nice and flat so just use your brush and tap them get them nice and yeah patted down as it were 
and just look over and make sure there's no gaps i am totally putting as much glitter on this now as i can possibly fit <laughs> but I'm using tiny beads of clear acrylic because I'm not trying to bulk the nails out if you use a lot of clear acrylic to do this stage you'll end up with a really thick nail by the time you cap it so just make sure that the beads of clear acrylic that you're using to pick up the raw glitter are very uh, runny very, so that it's it's not adding bulk it's just there to apply the glitter to hold them in place whilst you cap so you want the tiniest amount of clear acrylic at this point so that when you cap you've got enough room to cap you know, look see from the side see how flat that nail is you can see from the side i'm not adding any bulk with that clear acrylic because i'm using tiny tiny amounts of very wet beads to apply i've got a little bit of a gap there so i'm gonna put a bit of glitter in that gap i want full coverage no gaps as much glitter as possible isn't that mix amazing it's such an unusual mix i really love it so whilst those uh beads by the cuticle area are setting up i will start capping the bottom of the nail i'm using wet beads of clear acrylic again because i want the acrylic to seep in and around all of those beautiful glitter bits without having air pockets so if you do a like a wash of clear acrylic over it a nice runny bead then you can cap in a you know more normal consistency bead after that so just um yeah now you're adding your strength and structure once you've done those first couple of runny beads you can go back to your normal consistency just a little bit runnier and uh, build the strength and structure of your nail so i will look at the nail from all different angles and make sure that it is the correct thickness for a nice strong nail putting my apex in that back third i'm also going to be looking at the previous nails so that i'm getting a similar thickness on the nail i don't want this nail to end up being wider or thicker than the other nails because we want a nice uniform cohesive set of nails so they all need to be a similar thickness a similar width and a similar um, height so yeah you have to compare them otherwise you won't get a nice consistent set so i'm just checking the sides there making sure there are no gaps and if there are any gaps because like i said it is a really chunky mix i want to make sure that i fill in any gaps on the sides to make sure that glitter is totally encapsulated if the glitter is still sparkly and shiny it means you have not added enough clear acrylic so do go ahead and add a little bit more make sure that they are totally encapsulated and safe behind that clear acrylic so i will let that set up and move back to the little finger and this is where i'm going to be doing the ombre over the glitter it's quite an uh, i'm getting used to this um ombreing over the glitter look I quite like it now I didn't like it when I when it, that trend start first started I was always one for um ombre and the glitter over the cup pick cover pinks but yeah I thought I would do the ombre over the glitter on this occasion and I really liked how it turned out actually so just little wet beads to do the ombre first of all and I'm doing the ombre on a diagonal just for something different um instead of just a straight across ombre done it on a diagonal because that's the way I applied the glitter on a diagonal because that's what I wanted to do so thin beads of uh well slightly runnier beads of the pink to get the ombre going then I can do the normal consistency consistency beads build up the coverage towards the cuticle area and then I will cap that entire nail because I've used the pink for color only I still need to build my strength so first of all I'm going to cap the middle and the tip of the nail encapsulating all of that glitter again when I applied that glitter with uh, clear acrylic I used very runny um, tiny beads of clear acrylic so I wasn't building any bulk with that it was a very thin layer of the glitter in clear so now this is where I'm adding my structure getting my apex in the back third you want the uh, acrylic to go up from the cuticle area hit your highest point at your apex then slope down towards the free edge your free edge needs to be no thicker than a credit card you don't want extra thick 
a clumpy free edge on your nails because it makes life more difficult with long nails of picking up things and it just aesthetically it doesn't look nice if you have a really thick free edge so do pay attention to that don't apply too much acrylic there because you'll only hand end up having to file it all away afterwards so I will let that little finger set up and I will file in the color block because I didn't do a great job with my craft knife I did a terrible job with my craft knife actually <laughs> and the whole point of using it was so that I wouldn't have to file it in but yeah anyway I didn't do a very good job with it so I'm going to file in that color block nice and sharp that line because that's the whole point of having the color block you want a nice crisp line file that in remove all the dust and then you see I just used a little bit of monomer over the nail to just dampen it down so that I wouldn't have any frosted patches there and it also helps remove some of the dust wipe my brush on my kitchen roll then I can pick up a tiny wet bead of clear acrylic to pick up the raw glitter and nudge that into place on the nail same process again I'm not adding bulk with the clear acrylic it's very minute amounts just to help get the glitter in place and stuck onto the nail and again patting all of those pieces nice and flat so that they're not sticking up I really wanted to use this glitter mix um, a lot in this set as you can see it's just a, I think in my opinion it's just a really stunning glitter mix and I really wanted to showcase it so I'm using it a lot in this set not just as a little accent it's pretty much most of the set so packing on as much glitter as that nail can hold as usual I don't want any gaps I want them all filled in totally covered in this gorgeous chunky metal mix it's just I think it's a wonderful mix uh, it's probably not everyone's cup of tea but I really think this mix is beautiful it's got some very um, big I don't know what they're called but they're it's just like cut up bits of metal metallic looking glitter sheets I don't know it's just a really unusual mix anyway so I'm going to cap that once I've uh, filled in all of the gaps. Um, I have built my apex with the clear on top of the pink already. So I'm just going to cap down from the pink, basically making sure that all of that glitter is nice and safe behind that wall of acrylic, uh, clear acrylic. So that when I file, I don't file into it and I get to keep all that luscious, luscious metallic looking glitter again as I um, only applied the glitter using very small amounts of clear acrylic that layer was very very um, thin therefore I've got a good margin to add my clear acrylic so that I know when I start filing that glitter is totally safe I want to build the nail slightly thicker than it should be at the end so that way I know I've got a margin to file in shape because I like to contour my nails my application hasn't been great in this video I should have swiped the sides a bit more I have lost the shape on the of the nails a fair amount so yeah gonna have to do a fair amount of filing to sort this out so it's filing time for my frosty filing freaks here we go if you do not wish to watch the filing please feel free to skip ahead to that timestamp in the corner of the screen and then you will skip the filing and go into the top coat portion of the video but frosty filing freaks here we go so on this occasion the routine i am going with is the cuticle area first so i'm using just a small bit to go around that cuticle area make sure it is nice and flush to the nail so that when that nail grows out it will not catch on your hair and you won't have any step or lip there back towards the cuticle area which would look really untidy as it grows out but it's also really annoying because like I said it would get catched uh, caught in your hair and stuff if you were to have a step or a lip at that back um, cuticle area so make sure it is nice and flush to the nail try not to file away the color it's really easy to over file that area and then you end up filing the color away so do pay attention to the angle at which you're um, 
making that cuticle area nice and flush with your tools whether you're using a hand file or an e-file still pay attention to the angle at which you're holding that uh, tool then i will switch to a i think it was a medium bit this one and shape the nail so you see i'm down I'm, I'm shaping the sides as well so that i've got less to do with the hand file so i'm just literally bringing the shape back into the nail there we go sorting out some of the under arch and then some of the side walls of the nail straighten that out a bit where it's a bit bulky you see just bring it in a bit go over the body of the nail sort of debulk it a little bit where it's just a little bit too thick just remove some of that like I said my application wasn't great on this day so a bit of tidying up to do instead of going straight in with a sanding band I have um, used a card by carbide bit because there was a bit more tidying up to do than I usually have to do so yeah this is why application is really important because if I had sorted my application out better I wouldn't have had to use a carbide bit to do all of this tidying up so yeah I've made more work for myself by not being tidier with my application so yeah definitely pay attention to your application because it makes your life easier in the end it might take longer to apply the acrylic but you will have less time filing if it's a, a neater application but if you do um make it a bit too fat and a bit too bulky then filing will rescue and save the day for sure and an e-file is your best friend if you haven't if you haven't had e-file training please please get yourself some e-file training it will change your nail game so much so so much I highly recommend getting e-file training it's definitely worth every penny anyway so once I've debulked and sort of brought the shape back in a little bit with my carbide bit I will switch to my hand file and straighten up those side walls and the under arch get that shape back totally you see the difference between the little finger and the other nails how much neater that shape is I'm using the metal file boards I'm still not entirely convinced I like them yet but I'm really trying to give them a fair shake <laughs> I do prefer the normal hand files. I, mm, I'm not convinced entirely of these uh, metal fire boards yet. I think because they're thinner as well, I find it a bit more awkward to hold. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely convinced on them yet. But anyway, they're good for, for the side walls though, because they don't bend. It does give you a nice crisp shape on the side walls. So there is that, I suppose. So anyway, I'm just going to do on each nail exactly the same thing, which is bringing in those side walls, getting it nice and straight and tapered the way it should be, bringing that shape right back. And had I been neat of my application, I wouldn't have had so much filing to do on the side walls. But anyway, carrying on, same thing on each hand. Oh, look, cramping my thumb. So annoying. Anyway, side wall, under arch, rotate the file up, side wall switch to the other side because you want to do the same thing on both sides or oh, i'm also doing the free edge too of course so under arch oh thumb still giving me trouble <laughs> um under arch rotate the file up holding it really flat against that nail on those side walls to get them nice and straight and crisp you see the shapes coming back really nicely now so once I've finished that, I'll take a little look at them and make sure that all of the nails are similar width. And once I'm happy with that, I'm going to try and use my hand file and just blend in that uh, where I've filed on the side walls. I want to contour it and I was having trouble with my hands. They were really struggling. So there wasn't a lot to do on the surface of the nail because I did most of it with the e-file when I was debulking so I thought you know what instead of using the hand file to do it I'll just use my buffing block there's not so much to do on the surface and then I was like no my hands are just killing me let me just use my sanding band because 
my hands were oh, I was struggling this day I was really struggling the cramp in my hands was so painful at this point my hands were screaming at me to stop I just wanted to get the set finished so I took a little break and then I came back and carried on with the e-file but oh my goodness my hands were really struggling so yeah switch to the um, sounding band which will do the same job as my um, hand file would on the surface so I'm contouring this nail now and blending from the cuticle up to the apex and then blending down towards the free edge making sure that those nice sharp lines that I filed into the sidewalls I want to blend them I don't want them to remain I want them to be blended into the nail so you see I go up and down those sidewalls and blend that harsh line out so that it's a nice curve not a harsh angle on each sidewall you do want to contour that now that's really important I'm also going to pay attention to that free edge because as I said I don't like a thick free edge so make sure it's no thicker than a credit card if you can get it a bit thinner than that even better but you don't want to make it too thin because you don't want it to break of course so there's a thick literally a thin line between uh, a thin too thin of a free edge and, and um, just right so just uh, Pay attention, trial and error though, because if you don't try it, you won't know. Um, try and you'll see, wear the nails yourself and you'll see whether they can withstand normal everyday things, um, how, you know, however thin you make them. You can try to test it all out. I mean, that's how I tested out how to um, get my apexes um, lower because I would try it out because you know, my nails used to be quite bulky and I, I tested it out and I was like oh, I think I can use less acrylic I don't think it needs to be this thick and I tested my little theory out and it worked I keep I, I'm really hard on my hands and I noticed that if I used less acrylic and didn't bulk them out quite so much I could still have a strong nail as long as that apex is placed in the right place which for me is the back third when I learned uh, how to do nails the apex was a lot closer towards the free edge so of the natural nail that is so it would be in the middle of the nail that's where the thickest part used to be whereas now I keep it sort of back third and then start tapering it down from the middle of the nail if that makes sense so yeah the new apex versus the old apex most people don't use the old apex anymore because the nails did look much more bulky that way i prefer the back third for sure and it does balance out the nail as it grows as well it's um when you do the apex towards the center of the nail it's overbalanced quite quickly as the nail grows out so definitely keeping it in the back third makes more sense to me and that way i don't have to have to have them too thick so I have finished the filing, yay! I've, I've not bothered buffing over them. I'm like, the sanding bed's good enough. My hands have had enough. They don't want to do this anymore. So that's, that's it. <laughs> so I've removed the dust with a lint-free wipe and some rubbing alcohol. And now it's time to top it off and keep it tough. And look at that glitter. Oh my goodness, it's lush as anything. And then, oh, these hearts. I love these hearts, how they look. They look so cute. But we all know it means that we're at the end of the video. So I'd like to say thank you ever so much for coming to my channel watching this video spending some of your most precious time with me i appreciate you thank you ever so much if you have not done so already please go ahead and click that subscribe button join the frosty fam i'd love to have you we're a lovely bunch over here you know we have a good time uh, if you've enjoyed this video or it's helped you in any way shape or form please do click that like button it helps me out with the algorithm but also indicates to me that you're enjoying the content and of course as usual if you feel like it you are most welcome to leave me a comment I'm more than happy to talk to you but this is the finished design I hope you've enjoyed this one thank you ever so much for watching you take care now peeps and I will speak to you all again very very soon bye for now Hey
Take it.